what's up? It's Ella. Welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before you go to Mount Olympus. This video will be mostly focused on the amusement park portion of Mount Olympus, since that's where I spend most of my time on my visits to the park and the part of the park I'm most familiar with, but I will share with you what I do know about the water park as well. I've been to this park three times, twice when I was a kid in the late 2000s, and once in 2021, so this video will be largely based off those visits in addition to the information found on the park's website. Without further ado, let's get into it. Mount Olympus is located right in the heart of Wisconsin Dells, a big tourist destination known for its water parks, nicknamed the water park capital of the world. It's located right off Interstate 90, so it's easily accessible by car. The Dells are about halfway between Minneapolis and Chicago, about a three-hour drive away from both cities by car. There's also a few regional airports around the Dells, but I'm not sure if they accept flights from a wide range of places, so driving might be easier. There's also an Amtrak station in the Dells if you're looking to go to the area by train. Mount Olympus is technically a year-round facility with four different parks an indoor water park, an outdoor water park, an indoor theme park, and an outdoor theme park. All of these parks are pretty much interconnected and there's not really like a separate gated entrance for any of them, so it's fairly easy to navigate between the different parks. On their website, as of the time of writing this script, it says that the indoor water and theme parks are closed during the summer season, running from the end of May to mid-September. I'm not sure if this is the case for every season that the park is open, because when I went here back in 2008, I do remember both the indoor and outdoor facilities were open when we went in the summer, so I would keep an eye on their website to check the availability of the different parks. I can't find an exact date on the website as to when the outdoor parks open, but my guess is that it's sometime around May like most other seasonal parks in this region. But again, I would suggest keeping an eye on the website as they do update it so you can know exactly when the parks will be opening. The outdoor water park closes in mid-September, and the outdoor theme park goes down to weekend operations around this time as well. The outdoor park is open for weekends until the end of October, and there's also a new Holiday Lights event in 2021 that runs on weekends from the end of November to the end of January. But the rides in the outdoor park will be closed during this event, so do not plan on riding any of them if you're going to the Holiday Lights. This park does have somewhat limited hours, especially towards the end of the season, when it's only open for about five to six hours out of the day, so keep that in mind when you are planning a trip. The best time to go for the lowest crowds will probably be around the beginning or the end of the season, before the big summer crowds come, but the park will probably experience better staffing availability during the peak summer season, so there will be a better chance of everything being open and operating, my latest visit was in the end of May, around Memorial Day weekend, which was pretty crowded compared to what I remember from the visits that I took as a kid, but we didn't experience any ride closures that appeared to be from staffing reasons in our latest trip in 2021. The outdoor parks are really the star of the show at Mount Olympus, so if you're not sure what time of year you want to go, I would recommend to base your visits off the availability of the outdoor parks to make sure that you're able to experience all the best attractions. Wisconsin Dells is loaded with lodging options, so there's something for every single budget as far as where to stay in Wisconsin Dells. Mount Olympus does have its own on-site hotel named Hotel Realm, despite the actual Mount Olympus being from Greek mythology and not Roman mythology, but whatever, I guess. And Hotel Realm guests do get admission to the park included with their stay. The indoor water park is connected to Hotel Realm, so if you're staying there, it's an easy walk from your hotel room right to the indoor water park. Mount Olympus also has a lot of resorts that are about three to five minutes away from the resort itself, but Hotel Rome is the only one that is actually on park property as far as hotels. Both the off-site hotels and Hotel Rome all have a lot of different options as far as the room setups with different combinations of queen beds and bunk beds, so it's easy to find the perfect setup for your group. Mount Olympus also offers a camping resort with cabins and tent sites that come with a pre-pitched tent, which kind of removes one of the fun parts of camping in my opinion, but that is available if that is your type of camping. 
Aside from Mount Olympus-owned properties, the Dells are loaded with a ton of other options, including resorts such as Kalahari and Great Wolf Lodge. There's also plenty of name-brand hotels, such as the Hampton Inn and Best Western, but there's also a lot of independent hotels, many of which have their own water park of sorts. You can call it a water park, sometimes it's like a pool with a slide, but they'll still advertise it as a water park. The Dells also have a ton of campgrounds as well. In our visit in 2021, we stayed at Fox Hill Campground in Baraboo, which is just outside of the Dells. We rented a tent plot and had a really great experience there. Since we were a little further outside of the Dells, we did save a little bit of money on lodging, and the distance wasn't too bad from all of the tourist destinations, so it was a pretty good option. When you arrive at Mount Olympus, you'll pull up in one of the coolest parking lots ever. The park's premier wooden roller coaster, Hades 360, actually goes underneath the parking lot, but we're going to talk more about that later. Parking is included for resort guests, but if you are not staying at the resort, it will run you about $20 as of 2021. We did get charged for parking on our latest visit, which was a bit of a surprise because it was not advertised as paid parking on their website. Once you park, you have the option to purchase tickets at the gate, which also will be about $20, or you can purchase them online in advance, which as of November 2021, the park is running a deal where you can buy tickets for about $10, which is half off and pretty cheap for a theme park. So I would recommend buying those online in advance. I believe all park tickets grant access to both the indoor and outdoor water and theme park facilities. Note that if you do buy your tickets online, you still have to redeem them at the ticketing booth and get a wristband before you enter the park. Security here is pretty lax. I'm pretty sure we walked past the people who were checking bags without getting stopped. Granted, I did only have a fanny pack on me, but it was kind of weird that they didn't say anything to us. According to the website, Mount Olympus does not allow outside food or beverages in the park. It is also a smoke-free environment, meaning that guests cannot smoke or vape within the park, but we didn't really see this policy being enforced during our latest visit. The park website also lists that cameras are not allowed on the water slides, but that they are permitted on some rides in the dry park and that guests should check the rider safety guide signs before bringing camera equipment on rides. As someone who's worked as a ride operator, I'm really not a huge fan of this policy because the majority of guests taking photos or videos are just using their phone and not a properly secured camera like a GoPro, and phones do pose a considerable danger to guests if they're dropped on a ride and hit someone in the face. So always proceed with caution if you're bringing recording equipment on rides. The website also says that line jumping is not permitted in the park, but if you want to hear more about our experience with how that policy is handled, check out the vlog that we did from our May 2021 trip also on my channel. Mount Olympus isn't the greatest theme park when it comes to food. The food venues are scattered around the park and they don't really have a ton of options. We saw a barbecue place outside of the kids area right by Pegasus, but the line looked really long so we passed up on it. There are a few standalone kiosks selling funnel cakes and cotton candy, but nothing really outside of the ordinary of your typical theme park food. The park's website also doesn't list any of the food venues in the park. So I couldn't find a ton of specifics on the food offerings outside of my own experience. Since outside food is not allowed, I would heavily consider packing a lunch and eating it in the parking lot or eating before you arrive at the park. I will say on our latest visit in 2021, I was really impressed with the drink selection at the bar just outside of the barbecue place. They had a variety of frozen margaritas and a lot of different flavors and a lot of tropical cocktails as well as canned beverages like White Claws and different beer varieties. So if you're over 21, I would honestly recommend checking out the beverages while you're here. For a lot of visitors going to Mount Olympus, the water park is the main attraction for them. It is a really amazing water park with a good variety of slide complexes, kids play structures, pools, and other water features. One of the highlights is Poseidon's Rage, which is a massive wave pool featuring singular nine foot waves that come every few minutes. Another highlight is the River Troy, which is advertised as the world's fastest lazy river. I'm not sure how true that is, but it goes between the indoor and outdoor water parks, which is a cool touch. In 2022, the park is set to get North America's first slide wheel, which is a type of rotating water slide complex, which could compete with Poseidon's Rage as a standout water park attraction. There's also a really good blend of high thrill and more low-key attractions, so there's something for everyone in the water parks. I didn't go to any of the water parks on my most recent visit, 
So I'm not as familiar with them as when I went as a kid where we did spend more time in the water parks. But from what I could see and from what I remember from previous visits, the water parks were pretty well operated and provided a good time on a very hot day. Along with the water park, Mount Olympus has their indoor and outdoor theme parks. I'll talk about the indoor one first since there's not really that much to say about it. There's a few flat rides in there, most of which are geared towards kids. There used to be a spinning wild mouse coaster in the inside theme park, but it has since been removed and hasn't really been replaced with anything noteworthy or equal to like the thrill level that that ride provided in the indoor park. There's some arcade games, mini golf, and a rock climbing wall, which can make for a good option on a rainy afternoon, but in general, the indoor theme park is more of an arcade than a theme park. The outdoor park is more expansive than the indoor park and consists mainly of three different things, wooden roller coasters, go-karts, and kids' rides. There's also a Star Flyer, which is really the only like adult flat ride, and there's also an SNS Scream and Swing called Apollo Swing, which is an upcharge attraction and will cost you extra money in order to ride. The kids' rides consist of a kiddie train, some swings, a little airplane ride, some junior go-kart tracks, and a balloon ride. There's also the little Titans roller coaster, which is the only steel coaster in the park, and adults are not allowed to ride it. They do have a maximum height requirement of 56 inches, according to the website. The website does not specify if adults can ride with a child, but my guess is that they try to keep it just for kids as much as possible. Luckily for adult roller coaster lovers, Mount Olympus has four wooden roller coasters in their collection. Pegasus is the smallest of the bunch and has a reputation for being pretty rough and boring, but since it's not too tall, the ride is really popular with families. Cyclops is located right across from Pegasus and is known for having some strong moments of ejector airtime. It was also the first wooden roller coaster that arrived at Mount Olympus. When we visited in 2021, Cyclops was closed for extensive retracking, so we didn't get to ride it in our latest visit in May, but I do believe that it has since reopened, and from what I've heard, it's said to be a lot smoother after that track work. Next up is Zeus, which is an out and back style wooden coaster. We didn't ride this one on our latest visit because the lines were really long, but I do remember enjoying this one when I rode it back in the day when I was a lot younger. Zeus stretches alongside the parking lot, so there's some really cool opportunities for photos for this ride. And finally, the star attraction of Mount Olympus is Hades 360, which is famous for having the longest tunnel on a roller coaster, which actually runs underneath the parking lot. The ride pops out at the other end of the parking lot for a corkscrew and an overbank turn before diving back into the tunnel. This is truly a fantastic ride and honestly one of my favorite roller coasters and you definitely should not miss out on this ride on your visit. It is a little rough, especially in those tunnels, so do be prepared for that and you might get a little shaken up on this ride. Mount Olympus's other claim to fame is its extensive collection of go-karts. They have a lot of different tracks, some for kids, some with ramps, some that have tunnels, so there's really something for everyone when it comes to the go-karts. One of the most popular is the Trojan Horse Track, with this huge ramp that goes around a Trojan horse, but it's worth noting that that big ramp around the horse is actually closed off now, so you don't get to drive up that ramp structure, which is really disappointing because it looks like a really cool part of that ride. Despite being the premier amusement park of the Wisconsin Dells region, Mount Olympus has somewhat lackluster operations. All of the roller coasters only run one train, and loading is probably not as fast as it could be. Sometimes there's only one ride operator checking all of the seats on a roller coaster and operating controls as well, so if they added more staffing to the rides, it could help with operations. On the go-karts, however, there's essentially two loading stations, so one group of riders will be out on the course, while another group is being loaded into the carts in the station. So the go-kart lines actually move faster than the roller coasters. Hades 360 has exceptionally strange operations, since the operators are required to fill every single seat on the ride and pair all single riders. Yet they don't have a single rider line to make this process go faster. We timed one of the dispatches for Hades 360, and it took about five minutes to send one train out of the station, and I believe that the policy of filling every seat could be strongly contributing to the slow operations of this ride. Mount Olympus does not have a skip-the-line system either, so there's no way to bypass these lines. 
Granted, we did go on Memorial Day weekend, so the park was probably more crowded than normal, but if you're here on a busy day, be prepared to wait in some lines. Mount Olympus doesn't have the best reputation among the amusement community, and after my recent visit, I can see why that is. During our visit, we experienced a large group of people line jump in a line that was already very long for Hades 360, and this was a group of like 15 people, so it was really frustrating to see that happen. Luckily, this group did get removed from the line, but there wasn't any signs in the line itself about line jumping or that it's prohibited, even though it's listed against the park rules on their website. There was one sign in the station that did say that you can't line jump, but at that point everyone's already waded through the line, so it doesn't really do that much good. Another issue that we saw often in the park was guests jumping into restricted areas to retrieve lost phones, specifically while we were in line for Hades 360. There's a staircase in the queue that goes right above a low zone, and we saw a lot of people drop their phones into the low zone when they were leaning over the railing on the staircase. And this fence didn't have any signs that said, like, danger, keep out, or anything like that. And the track goes, like, right there, like, right by that staircase. And this is honestly just an accident waiting to happen. And every time I saw someone jump in this low zone, my inner ride operator was freaking out the whole time. And I honestly hope that they put up some signs that say, like, keep out, because someone's eventually going to get hurt. We also had an issue with a rude employee during our visit. Long story short, we let her know that there was a stall in the bathroom that was out of toilet paper, and she was really rude about the situation, but if you want that full story, go watch our vlog from our trip. Those are just a few of the reasons why Mount Olympus doesn't have the best reputation and didn't leave a great impression on me during our last visit, and I think there's a lot of simple improvements that could really drive up the quality of this park, like adding signs in the queues and maybe some more adult or family-friendly flat rides. If you want to see a full video on how I would change Mount Olympus if I was in charge, leave a comment and let me know. That's going to conclude it for this video here on Mount Olympus. If I missed anything, leave a comment below and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Let me know what part of this video was the most helpful for you, or if there's anything else you'd like to see in future videos in this series. Make sure to check out my other videos in this series if you like this one, and subscribe to see more content like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.